I'm at McDonald Island Park with the Suncor Community Leisure Center and Shell Place with Annette Antoniak, the CEO of McDonald Island. And there's a couple of big events happening on June 29th, events that are designed to bring the community together. What are the events, Annette? Well, it start, starts off in the morning with our pancake breakfast from 9 a.m. till 11 a.m. And it, our feature is Brett Kissel, who will be performing that morning. So he's going to be in the morning, the pancake breakfast presented by Smitty's, correct? And people will have a chance to see him in action before he actually gets in action at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. That's right. And there's an event happening later on that day. What is it? There is. Our doors open at 4 and it's free for the entire community. And so we'll be taking the live feed from Commonwealth Stadium for the Fire Aid concert. And so at 5 p.m. it starts and we have George Canyon who will be emceeing the entire evening. And so we will have a satellite feed going back and forth from Shell Place to Commonwealth Stadium and back again. So you'll see all the performers that are playing at Commonwealth on a huge screen here at Shell Place. It's actually 32 by 42, so it's huge. That's a big screen. It is. And that is, of course, the Fire Aid concert headlined by Nickelback at Commonwealth Stadium. That's a fundraiser to help support local charities right here in Fort McMurray. So you might as well come check it out here at Shell Place because it's free of charge and that concert is of benefit to you. Anything else you want to add to that spectacular day there, Annette? We just want to see everyone come out and enjoy and reconnect. Um, you know, people are slowly coming back into the community and this is an opportunity to meet, meet your neighbours, meet your friends, uh, family, and enjoy an evening out. Reconnect, that is the big word that we're getting out of this. We're trying to get a sense of normalcy here in Fort McMurray. Obviously, we know uh, part of the town has been devastated, but this is your chance just to get back into a little bit of a routine and back with your community members to celebrate that we are strong and we are here to rebuild. Thank you very much, Annette, for joining us. We have more Fort McMurray Strong right around the corner. The Birchwood Trails, beautiful, breathtaking, and exquisite. Yet if the Fort McMurray wildfire reached these trails back in early May, it could have meant the end of Timberley and Thickwood. It was an act of heroism which protected these trails. You know, Birchwood Trails is a main priority for us, and we were getting beat all over town um, the first day. We're getting beat all over town, but we will not lose Birchwood Trails. Had the wildfire reached the trails, 60% of the city would have been lost. It would have been devastating. Sources within the RMWB had already assumed it was about to happen and were bracing for the unthinkable. The risk of, of, of Birchwood going up, I don't know what the number would be for loss. Um, it just wasn't an option. We just could not lose Birchwood Trails. So the firefighters fought the fire for two straight days and with the fire just about to break the entry point to the trails, the fire department had to coordinate a plan with the aerial water bombers. But the pilots couldn't see a target. So a little piece of fabric ended up being the hero. The, the pilots in the, on the airplanes, they, they needed a target um, to, to drop on. And the guys took their helmets off their head and they, and they're, they're, you know, they're yellow and they, they threw it in into the trees. Uh, the tankers made another pass, still didn't see it. Um, so then I just threw that, that, you know, I just threw the order out there. You need to create a target for these guys. Through their own initiative, um, they come up and yeah, there was a, uh, a blanket that we hold in all the, all the, the trucks and they, they, they put it in there about 300 yards, they splayed it out and, um, and fortunate enough, the third pass on the tanker group. Of course, that was gonna be their last pass because they were running low on fuel. So this was it, this was do or die. And uh, they, uh, the guys made a target large enough that they didn't miss and the tanker drops started happening. Boof, boof, boof. And uh, saved Birchwood Trails that day. Call it motivation or innovation, a battle was won at the Birchwood Trails by the Fort McMurray Fire Department. Unfortunately, the beast destroyed the red tarp, but it will be a symbol for this city for many years to come. The Birchwood Trails was our, our trophy. Uh, the Birchwood Trails was our um, motivation. Uh, we hadn't lost our Birchwood Trails. For the unsung heroes and being Fort McMurray strong, I'm Doug Roxburgh.
At first glance, you'd think this was just a family cleaning out their garage, but it's actually a garage sale. A coffee maker here, toys for the kids over there. But what sets this garage sale apart from any other is there are no price tags. Each item is free. All compliments of the people like Jody and McSkimming and the strong community of Fort McMurray. We just put together a free garage sale for fire victims. So we have a whole bunch of people in the community that are just dropping things off. And then fire victims are coming over and picking up everything that they need. So anything from pots and pans and toasters and sheets and towels and all of that stuff. So people drop it off and other folks pick it up. All kind of cups and stuff like that. McSkimming is no stranger to stepping up for her community. In December, she helps fill 250 backpacks with the essentials with the group Santa Packs for the Homeless. Together with Jordan Adele Simon and the Facebook page YMM Helping Others, McSkimming is now helping victims of the Fort McMurray wildfire. She was kind of advertising that they were going to put together um, families that they wanted to help on that page. And I just sent her a message and said, hey, let's partner together. So Jordan's been really um, kind of driving and, and finding the families that need most help. And we've been collecting the donations and finding the people to sponsor the families to make sure that we get the, the right stuff into the right people's hands at the right times. Since the beginning of the project, the garage sale has become a second job for McSkimming and has since helped an estimated 20 families and it continues to grow. We've kind of been putting in about nine, 10 hour days just uh, helping folks out in the community and we probably are loading between nine and ten truckloads a day of, of fire victims going out with everything that they need and we're probably receiving between 15 and 20 truckloads a day. But that's not a problem for the longtime resident of this northern Alberta community because this is where her heart is. It's a big deal. I was born and raised in Fort McMurray so this is my home. Um, being evacuated and coming back and still having a home made me feel extremely blessed so the one thing I could do was was offer the space to do something like that but it's it's a, a heart touching thing you know this is this is our neighbors these are these are my people these are who we care about continuing to assist those who lost everything to the fire for Fort McMurray strong I'm Craig Momney we got I just got one person so small one woman okay it's a pretty amazing feeling that we've been uh, waiting for, working for, for about two weeks now, and uh, it's going pretty well. The Wood Buffalo Food Bank reopened its doors on June 11th for the first time since the evacuation, but not without anticipating a high number of clients expecting to utilize its services. We're preparing for um, a thousand families this month, where we've been kind of averaging around 500 families a month prior to this. We're hoping that doesn't happen. We're hoping that people are in a good enough position to be able to take care of themselves. But we're also pre we're preparing for that, and we're telling people, you know, like put your pride aside. You've suffered enough. Don't make food another hardship for your family and yourself. Higher than normal client usage isn't rare for the executive director. Johnson saw a large increase in families utilizing the food bank services in 2014-2015 due to the economic downturn and the drop in the price of oil. We had experienced a 72% uh, increase in 2015 over 2014. Um, January, February and March we were between kind of a 40 and 50% increase each month over the same month last year. Um, it was already really tough to, to do what we were doing. We had extended our hours because clients were waiting two weeks for an appointment. So we had increased our staff team and extended to 12 hours a day, um, five days a week. And, and so it was already a really tough situation. To make a tough situation worse, upon arrival to the food bank on May 28th, Johnson and her staff had to throw away any food item that wasn't in a can. The team discarded over 53,000 items of food but luckily for the social service, they've had a little help from down south to prepare for the influx of clients. Food banks throughout the province have been raising food for us through the whole month of May and continue to do so. And so we actually have a warehouse of food in Leduc, a 30,000 square foot warehouse that we have access to. We also have a lot of corporate food partners who um, are sitting on stock for us. Um, the Calgary Food Bank is sitting on stock for us and the Edmonton Food Bank is sitting on stock. Um, that will, um, will be shipped up the highway as we need it. Three tractor trailers of food have already made the trip up Highway 63 to the Wood Buffalo Food Bank. And in regards to the expected rise in usage, the food bank will reassess the situation in August. For Fort McMurray Strong, I'm Craig Momney. Rome.
Philanthropy is already alive and well in the streets of Fort McMurray as many are giving what they can to others who need help the most. Adults usually have an easier time fending for themselves and kids, so it's the children who are receiving the love from many people in the community. It all started with one little boy with one little bike from Brooks, Alberta, who wanted to help. My son said, Mom, can you take this bike to Fort McMurray? And I don't want anything for it, but just bring it. So I brought it, and he was, you know, concerned that the schools were closed, there was no parks, the houses were burned, kids' bikes were gone, their friends were displaced, and he just wanted to get a kid out on a bike. It's hard to describe the feeling of a kid on a bike, and even though I'm old and I got a bad memory, I remember what it was like, the freedom that you felt when you got on a bike and you're out riding around with your friends. And when Debbie decided she wanted to do this, I said, all right, do it, I'll fix bikes, I'll do whatever it takes to help make this happen. For McMurray has always been known to be one of the most giving communities in all of Canada. And despite the tragedy, the motto continues. Law enforcement officials have also stepped up and even stopped what they're doing to also lend a hand. <laughs> Kids are already coming in, they're grabbing their bike, and it's absolutely awesome to see. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Can you say thank you? Everybody's pleasure. Some youngsters may not realize the severity of the damage until they're older. So keeping them entertained, active and happy is a small step in the recovery process. For Debbie Perini and Lloyd Renton, they know the region of Wood Buffalo is a happy place to live and they want to pay it forward because their own flesh and blood would do the same. Our son, he was saving other people's homes while his burnt to the ground. And he's not the only one. There's lots and lots that has that story. Uh, I can't imagine the grief that those people are going through. So if we can help in some small way for to, uh, to help relieve that grief and stress, yes, only too happy to do it, you bet yeah. You just have to give back. Whatever you can do, if there's something you can do, you just do it. It's just what you do. It's the right thing to do. Watching the community roll back one wheel at a time, I'm Doug Roxburgh, and together we're... Fort McMurray strong. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Getting out of a city during a mass evacuation was easier said than done, and leaving Fort McMurray, you only have two options, by land or by air. For those going by air, WestJet was one of the companies who stepped up to assist the people getting to safety. The Tuesday when everybody was evacuated, we had cancelled our, our service out of Fort McMurray. The next day, we went in and we had, because a bunch of people were stranded at the airport, so we put three flights in and basically anybody who was at the airport at that time, we would get on the aircraft, we want everybody to get to safety. So it was, it was a little bit of just like whatever needs to be done to get everybody out, uh, we did. WestJet didn't just help those at the airport, as many residents were stuck north of town at the campsites provided by the oil sand companies. So with the support of Shell and Suncor, WestJet was able to get more workers, children and pets to a safer environment through their chartered flights program. So anybody who had arrived at these camps, we weren't charging them, but it was definitely being paid for uh, by Suncor and Shell to, you know, it was helping evacuate their staff and then anybody else, including, you know, children and a lot of pets. I'm sure you saw the, the uh, social media feeds around the dogs on the plane. Uh, anybody who showed up, it, get on the plane and we're going to get you out. Getting out is just half the battle as residents do have to return. So commercial airline services like Air Canada and WestJet have resumed operations and are doing everything they can to ensure residents make it back to Fort McMurray with minimal concerns. 
we're making adjustments in different markets right across the country, uh, adding more seats into Alberta. So those people that you know went back to Atlantic Canada, for example, we're now uh, getting them back into Alberta to pick up their cars. We do have a 25% promo code uh, for flights up until July 31st. Um, we have waived all baggage fees for people who are returning to the area and to Fort McMurray. Uh, we've also waived the pet kennel fees. We've worked with uh, Transport Canada to uh, ensure that anybody who did leave the area that doesn't have ID, um, that they, they will be able to fly. We just recommend that they get to the airport with extra time uh, to make sure that they can have a full screening before they get on the flight. So getting back will be made easier by the airlines as core infrastructure continues to be improved upon each and every day in Fort McMurray. The airlines will be doing what they can and our happy air service has resumed to the north. You know, we'll just keep supporting this uh, this story and, and this these great people of Fort McMurray. Everybody's hearts have been with the community since we saw the devastation occurring uh, at the beginning of May. And we're very proud to be able to support your community during this devastating time. And we're going to be here for you in for the long term. With an eye on the skies and being Fort McMurray strong, I'm Doug Roxburgh. You know, it's really amazing, you know, they talk about Fort Mac strong and really the strength of each individual came out at that time. The time in question was the day of the evacuation from the wildfires. The individuals were the helicopter pilots, doctors and nurses. The situation was getting dire as people were fleeing the city. As you know, we've been calling this fire the beast and um, I had no idea how large a forest fire could get until I saw a fire of this magnitude. And as the smoke kind of got bigger and bigger and closer, then it started to really get real. And then that's when I guess started kicking in that, okay, I think we might have a problem, I guess. It was real all right. The flames began to curl over the mountains near Avisand and made their way to Beacon Hill. So the hospital staff began getting patients to safety as quickly as possible. Most patients could be transported by the highways, but there was one patient who required immediate care in the intensive care unit. They had to be transported by air to the nearest facility, so with some quick thinking, Katie Kirshner called the Local Helicopter Emergency Response Organization, HERO for short, for a big time favor. We got a call, um, I forget the exact time, it was in the afternoon I believe, roughly about 2 o'clock I believe it was, from the IC unit at uh, Northern Lights Regional that some of the patients in the hospital couldn't be taken out by road and uh, we knew that it was about to be evacuated so we were asked to come and see if we could bring some of them out. So the other patients could drive out but there was one that we knew needed medical attention and needed it sooner than later so we had to get um, that patient out as fast as we could and as safely as we could. The first thoughts of my mind actually on the on the phone call request I said um, I, I think it would be best to get this patient sooner than later. Based on the conditions of the wildfire, the assumption from Ken Duick was correct. This phone conversation was the easy part, as the challenging part was mere minutes away. First, they had to navigate the blackened skies from Phoenix Heliflight to the hospital, and then they had to find a landing spot, because the Northern Lights Regional Health Center does not have a landing pad. Uh, first of all, we had to deal with all the smoke and fire, so we had to kind of fly fairly low uh, to get under, under everything and we were just uh, picking our way through um, as we went down the Clearwater Valley towards waterways and then uh, eventually towards the hospital. Um, we landed in the, the field adjacent to it. And uh, it was really surreal to just see this huge machine landing in a field where it should not be. And we couldn't get the patient through the gate that had access to the field. So that was frustrating. So then, um, one of the helicopter pilots realized, hey, I think we have enough room in the parking lot to actually land. We had to um, reposition the aircraft over into the parking lot, you know, not an ideal s setting to land the helicopter. So we had to clear out some cars in the parking lot to make enough space to bring the aircraft in so that the patient could be wheeled uh, directly into the aircraft and then flown from there. With no landing pad, if it wasn't for the quick thinking of the pilots, who knows what could have happened to the intensive care patient. The actions taken by not only the pilots, but the doctors and nurses helped save a life that day.
They don't want to be referred as heroes, though, as they are just part of a program that is designed for this type of situation. Our program here is actually called the Local Hero Foundation, which stands for Helicopter Emergency uh, Response Operations. So that's basically what I think of when I, when I think of hero. I'm glad the program exists um, so that we're here on, at, at the right time, at the right place to be able to, you know, do what we can in, in, in that kind of an emergency. The fact that we have um, the helicopters that are able to come and assist us, especially just being so rural, that um, it's phenomenal. Everyone has a story for May 3rd. This is just another one to add to the list as together we are Fort McMurray Strong and I am Doug Roxford. service in any community is an absolutely vital component of, uh, of a community's economic viability and uh, so we've been prevented from doing commercial service for obvious reasons because of the firefighting uh, for over five weeks. So the phased re-entry of that service is just a huge milestone for uh, the community and for uh, our airport authority and, and all our um, partners. Commercial air service is back in Fort McMurray as many residents are making their return home. The main terminal was a main priority for the first responders and is functioning once again despite some hangars and facilities being lost near the old terminal. On the first commercial flight back into the city, the aircraft became very quiet as people prepared for re-entry. As we approached the airport and people could see out the window what at sort of the magnitude of what had happened here, it, you could, uh, it was quite quiet and, and somber as people looked out and you could see houses that had been lost. You could hear a pin drop uh, on the aircraft as it uh, circled to land. Uh, people who uh, were looking out the window were seeing uh, from uh, the air on a nice clear day, uh, the uh, results of the disaster, and uh, it was quite an impact for them. When you look out there, you see everything that used to be, you know, full of trees and where it jumped the river and everything like that. It's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, yeah. Operations have taken a hit financially over the past month and a half. Instead of taking in approximately $3 million in the month of May, it will be zero. Insurance will help mitigate some of that cost and operations should be back in full swing in the coming months. Uh, and I'm expecting by November, December, we should be back to a more uh, normal operation, uh, uh, the kind of growth uh, perhaps that uh, we saw in, in the last few years. You know, as the day wears on, we'll have flights coming in from Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, and Toronto. And, you know, we're eager to get back to normal. Obviously, we'll be working with the local officials because there are still some restrictions because they've got important work to do. They're still fighting some fires, and we'll work with them. But we'll uh, get back to our regular schedule as quickly as possible. As more residents look to return, the court facilities look to continue to restore their operations. It will take time, and it will take patience. Together, we are Fort McMurray Strong. I am Doug Roxburgh. We're never going to forget. It's, it's, it's going to be something we're never going to ever, ever forget. But in the same token, it's going to drive us to put things back together that much quicker. Chris Hampton is one of many Shaw employees helping to get services back online in the affected areas after the wildfire. And he was eager to get back to work. It was my chance to give back to it. Like, uh, not as an Ashaw thing, I mean, that was part of it, but as my whole life, uh, 16 years I've been here, and this has given me the most I've ever had throughout my life, so it was the one time I could give back to this community. Hampton is part of a small team of 32 in Fort McMurray. They all safely evacuated the town on May 3rd, but not without loss. The homes of four employees, including Hampton's, burned down during the blaze. Hampton may have lost everything, but his spirit is still intact. I'm not the type of guy that's going to sit around and say that's not my job or leave it to somebody else. It's like, hey, we're here, let's do this, let's do what we can. And like I said, it's, it's my chance to pay Fort McMurray back for all the things that it's done for me. A lot of those people who lost their houses were the first to raise their hand and say, I want to get back, I want to help rebuild. We need to be there for our customers. And um, I think it was important for everybody to get back and, and help out as much as they could. Known for their assistance in recent disasters like the floods in southern Alberta, Hampton says Shaw has been a big part in supporting those affected in Fort McMurray and feels the company he works for looks at his customers more like a community than just a name on an invoice. 
Shaw really sees our community as a family, uh, not as individuals and people that just give us money for a product, right? I think we're a little bit more invested into our community than that, so, and that's what I love about this place. A sentiment shared by fellow Shaw employee, Colleen O'Hara. We know what Fort McMurray is. Fort McMurray is not just the oil sands. Fort McMurray is a community. It's a home. Um, whether we have a home or not, Welcome Home and Fort Mac is back is so much more than um, just work. You know, it's community, it's, it's pride, it's, it's our homes. This is home and this is where we belong and this is where we will rebuild. Sometimes people ought to think this is a, a transient town. You know, people come here for the work. But it's not like that. It's, it's more than that. It's a family. It's, it's a community, like an actual community. Like a lot of people come from other places and say they have a community. But when we overall look at things, I think that a lot of people would understand this is probably a better sense of a community than anything else. Continuing to support those returning to the region, for Fort McMurray Strong, I'm Craig Momney. We want to send a representative to each home and business. When we get there, we're going to have them do a safety inspection of all the gas appliances at that location. So they'll go through everything, make sure it's working properly, then we'll relight that customer. The way that uh, we're asking people to contact us is through atcoresponse.com. They can fill out a form. They fill out that form. It goes into our call center and our dispatch. There are other ways, though. We recognize not everybody has internet access, so they can also visit the um, welcome centers in Fort McMurray, and we have representatives at each one of those welcome centers to help people through the process, make sure that they get their service restored quickly and safely. So after you submit the request to have us come out and do a relight, put that placard in your window, someplace visible that uh, our staff can see from the street. And as we're going through a neighborhood, if we see that placard, we're gonna come to your house and we're gonna get you relit. We're doing the exact same thing for businesses. Businesses call in, go through the same process, we'll show up and we will make sure that things are safe, we'll do the inspection and we'll get them back up and running. Well, what it really will help us do is be more efficient at getting all those relights. They'll be able to go into a neighborhood, they'll see the placards, and they'll literally be able to go house by house, which really helps us be more efficient and helps people get their service back sooner. We are working closely to align with the municipality's schedule. So as they let communities back in, we're resourcing to be able to meet the demands of uh, relights in those communities. Over the next week, we're gonna have a large number of staff in the area being prepared to get out and visit all of those customers. Our people are trained. This is what they do every day across the province. They're the experts in the field and we really want to go out. We want to make sure people's homes are safe before they get the gas service restored to them. We want to come out and help them do that and there's not a charge for us to come out and do that for people. Really proud of how everybody across ATCO has come together and supported this, whether it's the people working directly in Fort McMurray or the people back in our other operating centers supporting this. It's been fantastic and uh, we are really proud of how it's come together and we've really enjoyed working with the municipality to make this a coordinated response. Really the best thing people can do is go to atcoresponse.com it has all the information they're gonna need regarding restoring their gas and electrical service in the Fort McMurray area. We have created this dedicated Shaw TV channel to help Fort McMurray residents stay connected to the latest community news and developments as they return home following the devastating wildfire in May. If you have important information or a story idea, please contact EDMMC at sjrb.ca.